The new 295 bow of the last guardian is completely broken in PvP and an incredibly powerful PvM weapon in the hands of the right user. Let's talk about it, so whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you enjoy my content, be sure to subscribe. This bow is unique because it has both a passive and special attack that are related to each other. The passive works as follows. Every single hit that isn't a bleed will give you a stack of perfect equilibrium. At 8 stacks, all of these stacks are consumed, dealing a little bit of ability damage and 35-60% to 60 of the damage that triggered the effects of the 8th hit. This is indicated by a sort of bright green coloured animation on your target. When the special attack comes into play, the amount of hits you need to proc the perfect equilibrium effect is reduced down to 4, meaning at 3 stacks, your next ability will proc the effect. The special attack requires 30% adrenaline, lasts 30 seconds and deals more damage on average than snapshot in a single hit at 275% average ability damage. If you want to get the most out of this bow, you need to use high hitting abilities right on the 4th or 8th hit depending on if you have the special active or not. Examples include using the Salt the Wound ability, or the bow spec itself to get a double bow spec, or how about a triple dark bow inside your EOF, dealing huge damage if you are to crit. Now the best thing about this bow passive is that you don't lose your stacks if you are to switch to a different weapon. So if you have an SGB, you can still switch to that SGB if you'd like to, to use it separately. Although, if you want it to proc, you know, the bow to proc on your SGB, you're going to need to have it inside your Essence of Finality. With some general information out of the way, let's start by talking about my first impressions of this bow when trying it out at a variety of different bosses, thanks to a clanny named Yagami who was able to borrow me this bow for a day or so. So the first boss I wanted to try with this bow was the Ambassador, just because I had such a great experience using big arrows at this boss with my Seren God bow not too long ago. Now, what I mentioned earlier about you keeping stacks is what I use to start the fight. Every time I go to the PVM hub, I would Gricko on a dummy to get seven stacks straight away and then start off the boss fight using my Sun Spear, which is my Planet Feet Switch, Death Swiftness, and then a pot if I needed to, and then immediately spec on the boss at the start to give me a double spec at the start, dealing huge damage. Now the hardest thing about using this weapon at any boss, not just the ambassador, is using the stacks properly. Keeping an eye on your stacks while dealing with mechanics is incredibly difficult, at least to do consistently. And the issue, at least what I find a little bit frustrating with this weapon, is that you don't get a single stack from using a blade ability, you just get nothing. Which means, you might want to adjust your ability order if you want to like get off a dark bow at like the 4th hit. You need a little bit more adrenaline, your, you know, your bleed is on cooldown, but maybe, you know, you want to get that dark bow spec out early, because you want to phase the boss or something. It's pretty tricky. You not only need to keep an eye on your abilities, but you also need to keep an eye on your stacks constantly while dealing with everything else which for me is quite overwhelming. That being said, even if you don't use it perfectly, this bow can still dish out a ton of damage, especially if you're using the right ammunition. Now without switching or doing anything fancy, I was able to get a sub four minute solo, which was 30 seconds faster than my previous PP, which I also got using big arrows and a Saren God bow. So I was very happy. The second time around, I got around the same kill time, although I did teleport out like five times because I wasn't satisfied with my start, but yeah. Continuing the trend of using big arrows, I was able to get a 3 minute, 1 second, 555% enraged Archalacer kill, which, despite my sloppy rotation and, you know, it felt pretty bad, that is a fast kill. I think that is considered a fast kill at this enrage, at least for the average Joe. I'm not talking about, like, insane speed PVM, but for me, that seemed pretty quick. And if I'm being entirely honest, pushing enrage with this bow and big arrows seems like a pretty good strategy at least until a certain point. Now, I have no interest in getting 1k, 2k in rage, but if you do, this might be a good option because the big arrows in the bow carry hard. Now, if you plan to do Elite Dungeon 2, Jazz Dragon Bane arrows are already very good, but if you're using this bow as well, using the spec, then using Gricko, being able to spec straight away, then using a few abilities and then specking again, just getting those double specs constantly is so fun because you just delete these dragons off the map. It is that strong. Now, is that a good way of using this bow? I'm not sure. I'm not a spreadsheet warrior, but it's definitely very, very enjoyable. Of course, the same thing goes for the bosses. If you use Jazz, Dragon, Bane, Arrows, you're going to deal a ton of damage, but even though that's a thing, and I was off Dragon's Task, by the way, 
I wasn't able to beat any PBs using the bow. Now, I only did one run, so it's not like I really tried hard here because I just wanted to make a point with the Jazz Dragon Bane arrows and the bow. But I feel like the biggest issue was adrenaline. Now, for most of the video, I was using Majorat Reckless, you know, the damage boosting auras, but if you don't need accuracy, using the Inspiration Aura for extra adrenaline and, of course, the Conservation of Energy and Heightened Senses, Archaeology Relics, are a good idea. Now, using Death Sport Arrows as a switch to get five stacks and then use Incendiary Shot is also a good idea if you don't mind switching ammunition to get extra adrenaline every time you crit. Although, you would probably want to use a Grimoire then to get those crits more easily to get that adrenaline. Also, having access to either a Reaver's Ring or the upgraded Stalker's Ring is, of course, going to be quite useful as well. Now, I also went to Rax and only really went to Rax to do this in P4. I would dummy Death Swiftness, build up the spec, use the spec, get three stacks on the bow, then target the Araxor boss or Araxi, spec, Greco to get three stacks again, spec, then try to build up to use SGB, and if that isn't enough, you Limitless and Snapshot to finish off Araxi. And this is a very fun way of getting P4 done quickly. Now, the only reason I'm able to spec Greco spec is because I have Kuroming 4 on my bow. So the spec is the fourth hit, then Greco is seven hits, so it's at zero stacks, plus seven hits, minus four, so you end up with three, and then you're able to spec again on that fourth hit, effectively giving you that double spec damage again. And then you just improvise, get that SGB spec done, and try and kill Rax. I'm not sure if this is a effective way of doing P4, but it's a fun way of doing P4, and range Rax is the easy style anyway. Like, if you're going to be doing Rax, this bow is going to be great for Rax. Now, a place I didn't really like the bow myself was at Karapak, and that's because of the Time Warp mechanic. The Time Warp mechanic takes a snapshot of where you were in time. That snapshot also takes into account how many stacks you had on your special. So if you had zero stacks, but 100% adrenaline, you use that Time Warp mechanic, you use your Death Swiftness, you get ready to build up and use that Dark Bow spec on the fourth stack or whatever from your bow, and then you get sent back, you get adrenaline, but you have zero stacks. It's already tricky enough to keep an eye on your stacks, let alone your cooldowns and when you're going to use Death Swiftness at Karapak. And then you also need to keep an eye on those stacks before you time warp. Nah. The boat also felt a little awkward to use it next, but that's just some getting used to because of the rotation you normally do. I think you'd like to start off the fight with the bow spec, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, either way, it's very good for Nex, unsurprisingly. I think there's people that got, like, new world records with it. But really, are you going to be buying an 8 billion GP bow to use it Nex? Unless you're doing speed kills or something? I, I mean, I'm not sure what you expect. It works well Nex, especially for the last phase, because that extra passive proc is an additional hit on that damage cap phase. Always nice. Now let's move on to Zamorak. Now this bow benefits greatly from the adrenaline you gain from the pads. And if you're able to build up to three stacks and have your bow spec active just before that pad charges and you're able to dump a dark bow, you know, snapshot and all kinds of damage onto the boss, you're going to be seeing some huge hits and skipping phases or mechanics, I mean, between pads is incredibly easy in duos and solos. And my duo partner wasn't even using the bow. He was using an SGB. We were using full arrows here, which is worth pointing out. And if you're using those, you want to be sure that you have enough accuracy. You might want to be in a reckless aura in case you are splashing. But, you know, I splashed some of the clips. But the amount of fun to just see those 15, triple 15k, sometimes an 18, 19k hit on this boss, it's just something else. And if you are to do what I was doing, which was dropping my Death Swiftness, building to three stacks and having the bow spec active, you could perhaps SGB just before the pad charges. And then using your dark bow spec with that bow proc getting triple dark bow every single time allows you to skip mechanics and solos every single time at least at zero percent in rage that is it just makes the boss fight incredibly smooth and dare i say a lot easier than dealing with the mechanics although with range you're still getting pummeled by zamrak the amount of food i ate compared to no fooding with crypt loom and anime dead is, uh, there's definitely a difference, is what I'm saying. So I mentioned this thing being broken for PvP, so how would it fare against someone in full magic tank armor using a magic shield? Um, well, that's how it would fare. But if you think that was a one-off, just wait until he walks back in, okay? Just, you know, give him some time to recover, think about what happened to him just a second ago, you know, let him walk in, do his thing, and we'll just spec him again, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> He's dead? 
just like that. The bow spec hit is so high, even out of death swiftness, that you're able to one-tap your targets with just the bow spec. And if they're a little bit more tanky, or they use debilitate on you in PvP, or they use resonance, you're still able to two-tap them using Grico to follow up, or if the passive procs on your other hit, you can combo them out quite easily, especially if they're stunned. If someone has the bow spec active, they have 30% adrenaline, and they're on three stacks. If they use the bow spec on you, the passive will hit you, and you'll be hit by the bow spec. Unless you're expecting it and you're not stunned or you're using defensive just in time, you are just simply going to get deleted from the wilderness or wherever else you're PvPing in a mini game without you knowing what happened. I say this because players usually PvP with Soul Split turned on. Now, even if you have players turned on, players can use Snipe to knock it off, or they'll just combo you out afterwards because your health is so low and you won't be able to out heal it. It's a dangerous weapon for PvP. Now, PvP is going to be optional once the Wilderness rework comes, so it isn't as useful to know this information, but I thought it would be interesting to add in this video. Overall, this weapon is very effective and fun to use, although to get the most out of it, you'll need to be able to focus on yet an additional thing when PvMing, which will be easier if you already use for manual and have a better mind keybind connection. And for that reason, I'm going to not suggest buying this weapon if you're a complete noob, even though it can definitely boost your damage if you just use the spec and that the passive dudes thing and just don't even focus on using the right abilities, it's still going to be a damage buff and it's going to be the best in slot bow you can get. But it's just so much easier to use a fracture Star for armor and brr out damage because the rotation is so straightforward once you have all the crit boosting items. For the elite PVMers out there, I would not be surprised if this weapon has the potential to rival the FS away, but probably only if you're using ammo switches and all that stuff. With that being said, we've come to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, leave a like down below and maybe if you consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.